Castles and carousels, dreams and fantasies, you are now tuned in to the Disney Holic Show. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Disney Holic Show. That's Jen Diz. And that's Mike TV. Today we get ready to set sail on the Disney fantasy with some trip planning talk, plus a fantasy land themed game of Password. I'm using like my uh, allergy meds for little. Oh, it's like little here. Morocco oh, castanet. Yeah, yeah. Wait, castanet's wrong. That's what flamenco users have, huh? I th- I don't know you what know it's what called. I was going for. A shaker of sound. Shaker. Sound shaker. Yeah. Can you believe? In just a few days, we will be sailing in the middle of the Caribbean Sea. I can't wait. It. I can't am wait. So excited! I can't believe this is even happening right now. We love a last so, minute um, adventure. It's the best. We do. However, it does give me this like other level of anxiety. Like I'm just like, wait, wait, wait. And then it's hard to like, you have your, like you start thinking about what you need to do for a certain day. So like I'll think, okay, on Friday we leave, but I say Friday like two weeks in advance. So then I'm like preparing for right. that Friday, but it's not even that Friday yet. It's the next one. So Ooh, but luckily, I needed more time anyway, so here we are. <laughs> and the nice thing is, I I think for the most part, we're going to be in similar climate for two weeks between being in the ocean during hurricane season, and then an, uh, we're spending another week in Orlando area for Disney World, also kind of humid and wet, soggy, moist. Mm. Yeah, that part I'm not excited about. Let's just skip over the rest of the conversation about that. <laughs> but I am excited about the hurricane weather. Um, it's like, who needs a roller coaster when you've got nature? There you right? go. We'll be, we'll Isn't be that the positive way to think about it? Rocking on the boat. It is, is going to be gorgeous. Like, if we get some rain and thunderstorms from our veranda, that's so beautiful. Yeah. It'll be nice. Stop. I'm, just, I'm excited for that. Yeah. Like, I've never seen... Like, I remembered last cruise that we went on i was standing out on our veranda speaking of at like two in the morning like just looking out into pure darkness Mm. of like the endless ocean and i realized i had never i've never seen that before ever that was a first time for me maybe when i was little because i went on a cruise when i was a kid but i don't remember it like that was the first time that i've just been able to like look out into nothing and be on like land maybe when i was on an airplane doesn't feel the same though right yeah. i love it it just feels like it goes on and on and then sometimes you can catch like a few lights in the distance and it's usually like another cruise ship or a cargo ship or something very yeah. far faint Ooh. so weird and you're so small when you get when you like take yourself into the fact that you're out miles and miles into this endless ocean like, yes wow, kind of crazy and everything that's like below us swimming around that creeps me out Ooh. <laughs> Night swim. I haven't seen that movie. Is that a horror Not movie? Either, oh. but I'm watching it tonight. Okay. I just hear that it's very scary as far as things that are swimming underneath you. Oh, which is all that was about. Pop so. and stuff. So that'll be great before snorkeling. I'm going to. Yeah. I'm going to watch it tonight. Also, then it's on my list. I also learned that our friend Danny, friend of the show, she has a phobia that she named, and I can't remember the name of it. But it's a phobia of things that are artificial below you in water. <laughs> so, so, like, she ta- we were talking about the um, the sculptures over at Castaway Key. Oh, that would be one of those things. Oh, yeah. Those things, the big one that always comes up with this kind of phobia. I've heard of it before, too, which is funny. Is those things that clean the bottom of the pools. Oh, those little, those little, little wallies. <laughs> little, yeah. yeah. Little Roombas on the on the bottom. Those creep me out because I don't like the cord tube touching me. But it doesn't yeah. it doesn't scare me. It just it's more like gross. Uh, but I could see if you had that fear that you mentioned the Prince Eric statue underneath the water in the corals. That could be pretty creepy. Yeah. <laughs> Especially if or you don't have uh, the old submarine ride. 
Ooh, the cross-eyed dragon. If you don't have, uh, or sea serpent, if you don't have goggles on, it's even scarier because it's just blurry. Right. So <laughs> at what least goggles. That? I'm going to try to head out there and, and snorkel again the second time and, and look at all the things. But this time, I'm thinking I might bring my phone in one of those like water cases and try to get some shots. It's much harder than you think, though, because they have a, you're required to wear a vest, a life mm-hmm. vest. And although it has just like a, like that much air in it, just to keep you above water. Zoom is cutting that out. I can't even uh, hear you, but I'm uh, sure GarageBand can. <laughs> like a poof of air. And it it's enough to keep you afloat, which is good, but not good if you're trying to dive and look at the things underneath. So right. The struggle's real. We were talking real. about that, too. And I remember when we went to Castaway Key, you and Nicole ditched me. I wasn't ready yet. Next thing I know, they're way out into the ocean already. And I'm, like, struggling trying to get my stupid life vest on to catch up with them. Like, while realizing that I haven't actually swam in a very long time. Like, anytime I'm in a pool, I'm just, like, hanging out. I don't, like, swim. You know, and I'm, like, way out of shape compared to the last time. So I was like, I'm sure it'll be fine. So I start swimming in this stupid life vest. I don't know. Were you having this problem, too? Nicole said she was, where it was going up to, like, her head. Yeah, I I think I had to, like, tie it really tight to my chest or waist or something. Yeah, Yeah, I was like, I could not, for the life of me, get it to stay down. It kept floating up. And I'm like, this life vest is holding me back so much. It's taking me, like, ten times as long to swim. (laughs) So, like, by the time I catch up to them, which I probably won't, it'll be out of the things. I don't even know where it's at. So I just turned my happy ass around and went back to the beach. (laughs) There you go. Layout. Have a good layout. It is much harder than it looks. So when when you're in the... In the lagoon area, looking at the stuff, it feels like you're so far out. And from what there's like little buoys so that, you know, from the top of the ocean where the things are. So you want to swim from buoy to buoy and then dive. They look so far from each other. You're like out of breath. There's like lifeguards everywhere. So it is safe. But then I'll look at it from like the map or whatever, and it's so small. And I'm like, how am I in there freaking out <laughs> like I'm in Titanic on the set of Titanic? So it, it really Fs with you, your mind. How were the lifeguards out there? Were they just floating around or were they like they were on floaty? On the or? side on tall chairs, like on the rock separator. Oh, yeah. is that close to the sides? Okay. Yeah. And again, it's not as big as you seem because I bet you they can dive in and probably get to, to anybody within like, 20 seconds, maybe. Okay. Yeah. I should have gone down to where they were, which they probably wanted to go over, and start from there. <laughs> start from I jump off the rock edge thing. Yeah, totally. my stupid life jacket. Um, and so the other thing, so I'm talking about going on the snorkel thing, which you can just get day of. You can rent the snorkels and the goggles or bring your own. But most everything else you have to plan in advance and since we booked the cruise mid <laughs> mid booking window of such said activities, they were like almost all gone, and that's totally okay. It is what it is. I'm totally fine with yeah. it. I feel like there's so much to do already that I don't really feel like I'm gonna have any missing out feeling. Yeah, I think it's just fine. I think I think we'll both be good. There's plenty to do, and then when the two of us are together, we make everything interesting and entertaining. Um, this is why I'm okay with it. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> and that ship has so much to do. I sent you a preview of the Midship Detective Agency. Yes, um, I thought you were faking it with Vicky uh, ChatGPT. <laughs> it sounded so good, too good to be true, the description. I just copied yeah. it from the website. Um, what do you think? I tried not to give you too many spoilers, but what are you excited about with that? I'm excited because it actually... so. There's some of these scavenger hunts that they'll do at the park or something where um, it's almost just made for families, which this one also seems that it's very much made for families, which is fine. But you just kind of do it casually as you're around the park. This one, like, says it leads you to a room, which for some reason I love <laughs> that. Like, do you go into, like, an actual state room? At some, it just seems, like, cool or, like... I don't know. You get to access some area that nobody else knows what it is unless you've like, discovered it. You know, that's like kind of fun. Very cool. So I'm excited to do it. And there's like multiple storylines. So we can play as much as we want. Like there's a Muppet theme one. There's a more of like the Mickey and Friends theme one. 
Um, I vaguely remember doing this. It's on both the dream and fantasy, and I vaguely remember doing one of the missions, but definitely not finishing it. It's one of those things where you go, oh, we'll do it throughout, you know, we're going to be there seven nights. We'll do it throughout the seven nights, and then on the sixth night, you're like, shit, we haven't even done any of the puzzles yet. (laughs) So we should start um, in the beginning, if we like it, keep going type of thing, right? Well, you nailed it because there are not activities after midnight and we will likely be up after midnight. So that's perfect. There you go. Let's do those in the evening when there's nothing else to do. Wander around the ship. And we can also use that time to pixie dust people's rooms. Um, So another fun thing that we like on cruises is the fish fish extender activity where you um, connect with other people before you get on the ship and you trade uh, stateroom numbers and favorite Disney things, and then you bring each other gifts. Usually, there's like five or six people in each group, but we also missed that cutoff, so we're gonna do pixie dusting instead. Do you remember what that is? Yeah, so pixie dusting is when either you are not participating at all in the um, uh, fish extenders or just want to do a little extra. Like maybe you got assigned a certain cabin to do the fish extenders with, but you want to give other people some fun stuff to have their little fish extenders out. So you just call it pixie dusting because it's a little extra and you just go through and drop little fun things into people's fish extenders on their doors. I can't wait. And so I'm still here in Mexico and they have a lot of these like makers markets with all kinds of knickknacks that I never need. Now, I'm so excited because I could buy them. I've been going crazy buying magnets, patches, and they're so cheap. Um, Cute things like everything from like Deadpool to Stitch. And so we can bring them on the ship and pixie dust into people's little pockets. It'll be fun. Very cute. Yeah. Uh, What else? I still go shopping for mine however I need to make sure they are tiny. Small is good. I made everything in my carry-on, yep. There you go. And if you don't have any, I have tons, so don't worry. Um, we have a question that you asked, and I think we should discuss it here on the on the podcast, which is, do we dress up? Do we bring any dressy clothes? And if so, what for? Yes. Um, so we had also already discussed a little bit about this, saying that we would need to bring an outfit that we will only use once on the entire trip. <laughs> And the worst part is that we'd have to bring a new pair of shoes with it. That's right? the hard part. Yeah. They take up so much room. They take up so much room. Um, and I'm just bringing so, like Birkenstocks and flip flops for the cruise. <laughs> Maybe right. one pair of slip on bands, but no dress shoes. Right. And you had mentioned that there was, um, there's not very many opportunities that you need to dress up to, um, but there are some nice add on dinners, which we hadn't actually really talked about yet. But if we wanted to do those, there is an option for one of them to be a lunchtime add-on. And that way it doesn't interrupt our dinner. Like There's already big dinners every night that we do. Yeah. Um, So then we don't lose one of those. We have a nicer lunch than just the buffet. And it doesn't require you to be fancy. So I think we should just go with that. I think so, too. You know me. I'm Miss Casual. Those are fan favorites. So those options. It's a brunch, actually. My favorite meal of the day. Oh, that's right. They're hard to get into. Already (laughs) sold out. But these things open up. So we'll let our travel person know and see if it pops up. But I like that because then we don't have to overpack too many things. And we'll just go with the flow. Um, But those two restaurants uh, are specific to the fantasy and the dream. One is called Remy, as in Ratatouille's main character. And the other one's called Palo. And I believe there's Palo on some of the other ships, too. Uh, But yeah, to your point, those are the ones that are an add-on. So you pay a little bit extra um, for a grand, crazy, amazing, fine dining experience. But I remember I did Remy once, and it was long, like two and a half hours, maybe. Oh, wow. Yeah. It was giving... um, uh, what's that place we went to for uh, Jessica's birthday? 21 Royal? 21 Royal. <laughs> it's like that. Wow. Yeah, like slow, let's talk about each course, let's pair it with a uh, beverage. Okay. Each one's kind of small. Um, but yeah. Wait, is whole... this the Remy one that, oh, I don't even think this is on a cruise ship. Is this the Remy one that, in, that uses the uh, projection mapping? Oh, Oh, wait. I thought you were going to ask about something like else. That. So there is a rest, a Remy-themed restaurant that used to, I think they took it away, have a Remy animatronic underneath the, 
the, the an animatronic. Uh-huh. So you would they would come around on the food cart, which they usually show for your cheese and dessert. But then they open the the tin food cover, and then he's inside and he talks to you. He's like, no, 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 no. Maybe that's what I thought it was, but I assumed it was projection mapping because I just didn't really pay attention to the photos. <laughs> so that's that a one, very tiny animatronic. Yeah, I don't know if that was ever on the cruise ship. I think it was only in the French. Um, in Gusteau's restaurant in Disneyland Paris. Oh, okay. I think they had it there. But there's another dinner dining venue that is on this ship that we did not get to see on The Wish because it doesn't have it on that ship. It's called Animator's Palette. This might be something you're thinking about too. Um, So this one's pretty cool. I think we go there, since we're on rotation for seven nights, we'll get there at least two nights in that restaurant. (gasps) Yeah. One of the nights, uh, and they'll be different each time. So one of them oh, cute. Uh, will be kind of like Turtle Talk with Crush. They swim around to each of your table, and they actually talk to you. It's live. And I mentioned this to you on my solo cruise when I did the episode recap. And I was talking to Crush by myself. I was the only one on the table. It felt so real and magical. Everyone was staring at me. My face was red. <laughs> and I can't wait for both of us to, to experience that. <laughs> I'm excited for that one. Yes, that one I have, I thought was like on every Disney cruise. So did for I. Some reason. Yeah. I don't know why, but um, but yeah, I, I remember that was like one of the only things I was like, aw, about when we went on the last cruise. I was like, oh, <laughs> I thought we were going to do that thing that I always hear about on the cruise ships. Um, so we're finally going to get to do that. So that's super exciting. And twice, bring it on. Bring it on. I thought it would be on every ship too, because it's classic Disney animation. You're eating in what looks like... Um, pen and ink studio come to life giant paint brushes holding up the ceilings you know that disney aesthetic before they went all plain jane yeah (laughs) it's it's really cute ink and paint and it comes ink and paint it comes to life while you're eating and then on the second night depending on which one's first on the second night is the one where everybody who's dining gets to be an animator for the evening and you draw your own character, and then something happens, and it comes to life. That's all I'll say. Gosh, I'm so excited. Yeah. That one I am very, very, very excited for. And then we have all the fun activities. The trivia, the game shows, meet and greets. Do they have, do they have dinners similar to The Wish where it's like a stage show while we're eating dinner? Funny like enough, one? no. You know, that's really interesting. Um because so in my mind i think of the different ship classes right so you have like the magic class which are the smaller ones the og ships then you have dream and fantasy which were the large ones now they're like the medium ones and then you have those mega ones which is like the wish and the treasure they wish and treasure and all that have the cool show dinner show they went back to the magic and wonder and remodeled one of the dining rooms to give it that I think it has Tangled and Tiana, depending on which ship. And as far as I know, Fantasy and Dream do not have those yet. There's definitely entertainment in the rooms. Um, But I don't remember a live show. But hopefully I'll be surprised. And maybe they've added it since... The last time I went was 2011 on the Disney Fantasy. Wow, I can't believe you've been cruising that long already. It's crazy. I can't (laughs) either. So I I look to the left right now because I put up all my magnets. I I finally put them back up now that we've moved. And that one I remember putting up 2011. I was like, oh my gosh, it was my 30th birthday. So over a decade ago, but I barely remember it. It was my first Disney cruise. It was very overwhelming. And I think it was short, maybe four nights, maybe even three nights. Um, So I I barely remember it. It's just all a blur. So there you go. Got it. Well, nonetheless, it's going to be a blast. Bahama blast. Um, Bahama breeze. Yeah. I'm just Bahama <laughs> blast. Um, shout out to Courtney, who we will see in Orlando. She just went on her very first Disney cruise, just like over this last weekend. So we're going to talk to her oh. about that a lot when we see her in Orlando. Oh, perfect. And she went on The Wish. It was a three-night cruise, so a very short one. Um, and she, I'm, I'm just going to wait. We're going to probably have her on the show. Well, we visit anyway, so we could talk about that too when we recap a little bit about the, the cruise and we could see what she thought of hers on there. Um, I think it's a very different experience than the two of us, so I'm excited to talk about it. <laughs> Ooh, I love it. That'll be good. 
Um, one more thing I thought would be fun for us to prep before we go out to see is I checked with other Disney Cruise Line fans and to see what some of the secret finds are on the ship. Um, and in parentheses, they put, or not so secret, because, you know, it is a ship. You usually figure it out pretty <laughs> soon. But one of the things that um, piqued my interest, especially since we're planning to just um, free ball it the whole time. <laughs> what is it? Raw dog? Is that what people are calling it now in the airplanes? Raw, raw dog. They're saying um. It's the new trend where they're like, I'm <laughs> raw dogging on the plane where there's no music. They're not watching anything. They're just looking straight with their eyes open. Oh, my God. Right. What's wrong with that? <laughs> it seems it's awful. Miserable. miserable. I mean, at I least a book or Nintendo something. I Nintendo Switch games for the flights because <laughs> right. I'm going to be by myself. Like, I have to be entertained or I'll go crazy. I would go crazy, too. I feel like this next generation... Gen Z and young millennials, they're over exaggerating what the past used to be like. Because before phones, you still had books and newspapers. Game Boy. Game Boy. I used to always go to the newsstand in the airport and pick up a bunch of like the magazines, like People and Us magazine, celebrity update. Yeah. Um, I never what they call raw dog it now. I never. I've never done that. Oh my That's god, crazy. Mad Libs. Mad We've Libs. We always had Mad Libs for road trips. Road trips. Flights. Yep, I love that yeah. for road trips. Um. Oh, we should have a Mad Libs on the cruise. That could be fun. We should create some Disney Holics Mad Libs. We could ask Chat GPT to do it too. We can. Vicky. Um, Vicky. Vicky. So, anyways, there's this thread on Reddit: secret, not so secret finds, and one of them is Happy Hour. So I thought this was interesting. I never really pay attention to that. I'm usually not a big drinker at Disney places, and then depending who we're traveling with too. So I usually just not pay attention to that. But what I learned is. It's a really great way to do a couple things. One, that's where most of the adults gather um, around happy hour time. So I think it's like six o'clock, five o'clock. And it's a good way to force yourself to make sure you see every bar on the ship, every themed lounge. Um, They also have mocktails and cocktails, just like they have a drink of the day every day, mocktail and cocktail. They have have the sale. The happy hour includes mocktails. There you go. Happy hour includes mocktails, but um, they're not free, but they're super cheap. You know, I think um, comparatively to on land, the drinks, even the mocktails are what I consider cheap. Like five dollars, six dollars, seven dollars. That is cheap. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, and then you get to meet and mingle with other Disney adults, and then the they say the staff are like extra attentive during happy hour. So then you know which ones you want to go back to, to chill, mm. like at ten at night or something like that. So cool. um, that was one of the tips that I think would be fun for us to do. Are we going to mingle with other people? I'm like cho- I'm choking on my own words. I think I like I like a, what was what's our phrase lately? Thoughtful and intentional meet and greet. So a happy hour to me is perfect. It's designed for that to, for in and out okay. and quick Irish exits and just like hello and goodbye. <laughs> totally. But I have an important question for you. Do you want us to request our own two top table for dinner, or do you want to be put with strangers? Too top. <laughs> Even me. <laughs> Good. I'm glad I we're on the same page. Especially if we're going to be going to these happy hours. Because, man, you can get paired with the wrong person and it's not fun. Yeah. Dinner's an intimate thing. Happy hour is more like casual. So. Thank you. I agree with that. Dinner is an intimate thing. There's all kinds of reasons why you have conversations. You talk about things that you are saving for dinner time conversation. You're eating and stuffing food in your mouth. There's just all yeah. kinds of... Re- yeah. and, and I don't want to small talk while I'm doing that. Any of those things. Right. Yeah. I, I agree. So we'll see. So that reminds me. So when we get on board, we have to go down to the restaurants area. And they have a booth where people are uh, making requests directly to the dining staff. Um, and we need to go down there and request that. I think what me- most people go down there to do is actually to request to sit people with each other. Like if you have multiple oh, like, state no, we rooms. Want, we like barely want to sit with each other. We're like, no, nope, just just the two of us. And I think maybe some people like certain locations, but not us. We just go with the flow on this trip. Yeah. Um, all right. More tips from Reddit. Um, was the midship detective agency. We already talked about that. 
Um, somebody already. Uh, somebody also said that the appetizers that come out late at night. So, in the adult-only nighttime district, they do put out late-night snacks, and Cute. I think it's okay. like 10 p.m. and it's like a hot buffet, and it has. It's very like finger foods. Like you'll have like samosas, egg rolls, chicken tenders, fries. Like this is my life. I want to always live. Right? <laughs> you get you get your grease at 10 p.m. Stay up a lot later. It'll be great. So that's there, um, and most people don't know what it is is there because it's like nestled between the different bars and then the nice adult bathrooms. So unless you're like nice. wandering around, you might you could easily miss it. Quick question, and I think I remember the answer to this from the previous cruise, but this actually came from Danny, friend of the show, who almost went on this cruise with us. <laughs> but she's a night owl, just like we are, and she's like, is there food after hours? Like, at 3 in the morning, if you get starving, what do you do? Mm. And it, all of a sudden, I had flashbacks to our Disney World trip where there wasn't food <gasps> at 3 in the morning. Yeah. Um, there is, right? They have, like, certain selected things open still at the buffet area. Like a pizza place or something, don't they? So the the stuff on the top deck, which I think we're kind of close to, which is good, like where you get the burgers and salads and pizzas, uh, those usually stay open till maybe 10. I think the pizza place 11. But n- knock that all out of the way. Room service oh, room is service. free and it's 24 hours. Yep. <laughs> 24 <laughs> hours. It's free. It's included. You can get pretty much anything that you could get up on that top deck. Hamburgers, hot dogs, chicken tenders. And there's just had... a whole off-menu secret <laughs> list of things. Yeah, I just had a flashback of that grilled cheese that we Ooh. were like, we have to get the grilled cheese at 2 in the morning. <laughs> we are so stoked about this grilled cheese. <laughs> and I mean, it's like cafeteria food, but it's delivered to your cabin 24-7. Hey. Who cares? And if you're hungry, it is food. Yeah. You're not stuck on a ship without any options, right? That's the best thing to know. But there are some tips for people who are going to depend on the room service. The beverage stations up on the top deck are always open all night. Okay. So if you order a Diet Coke, for example, from room service, you will get charged as if you bought that from the bar. They'll send you oh, like a can interesting. down. Okay. Yeah. So you always want to make sure you're but getting not your the food. But not the food. <laughs> that's heck of weird. Get your drinks upstairs on deck. Unless you don't mind paying that, that's fine. But knowing that it's like a couple floors up, I'm even bringing my brand new Stanley thermos. I'm going to keep that thing with Diet Coke and ice in it. <laughs> Love it. Um, tea and coffee also included, which is very different than other ships like Royal Caribbean. You usually have to pay for a beverage package. Um, so Disney, it's included. Some of the other off-menu items on room service uh, is the Mickey ice cream bar. And there's a couple more I heard on YouTube and I completely forgot, which is bad. I was going to tell you on this episode. That's a fun one. So we got to see what else they have. Wait, question. Yes. We, the last cruise I went on with you, we had concierge, so we didn't need to worry about this. But should we do that grocery shopping thing that people do to, like, drop off at the the whatever the gate and then they bring it to your room um i would be in- like diet cokes and stuff like that <laughs> right. for your fridge you know what i mean i i am interested in somehow getting groceries but not a lot of groceries specifically celsius you know i'm obsessed with yeah, like just my energy drink drinks stuff, yeah like especially stuff they don't have specific. there um yeah you can also bring booze uh through there through that way too wow which is interesting there's like a limit a certain bottle of wines per person and then i think unlimited non-alcoholic beverages um but you do have to carry it so you can't check it in your cruise check bag you have to carry it through the actual oh, security i thought there was a way to check it in okay yeah. maybe not. food and drinks they make you carry it until your room is ready that's your punishment. Oof, and liquid is the heaviest thing. <laughs> yeah, it so. is, right. Uh, but yeah, maybe I'll try to do get some Celsius. They only have Monster on the ship, and that's if it's in stock on Disney Cruise Line. And I mean, maybe if you buy like a six-pack that's one, almost one every day. There you go. And that's, that's not too bad. Yeah, and just yeah. carry it around for a little bit. Put in your backpack or something, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, we were spoiled with concierge last time because we also could go in the concierge lounge and get the mini cans of soda anytime we wanted without having to go <laughs> yeah. to the top, top deck. They were in our fridge yep. at all times. So you remember they, they always stocked our fridge in our room 
Yeah, we were definitely it spoiled. Nice. So nice. I have to remember the things that are different. But I think that was maybe that's it is not having the lounge and the soda situation. It's like really yeah. the only thing I think I have to worry too much about. And since we're not like, um, since we're not going wild with activities, that's another thing they help with is if you book through them, you can move stuff around or cancel it without penalty. But if you're non-concierge, right. it's like you're really committed. Um, but yeah, I'm excited for you to see the differences because honestly, it's not that much. They pamper you on Disney Cruise Lines regardless of what um, cabin type you get. Right. Um, all right. So another fun tip um, is the Remy Champagne Brunch. So we also talked about that. So obviously, it's not that much of a secret because it's all sold out. Um, concierge was all what? sold out, by the way, too. You know, I did try. <laughs> you know, uh, you know me. <laughs> sold out. Oh, my. God. And even though he, you just went on another cruise in between. <laughs> yes. And you didn't do concierge. You're like, this is great. I don't it need that totally ever fun. again. Especially because I was so by myself. <laughs> you know what's funny? The reason why is because I've done concierge on two of the three classes now, but not on the fantasy dream class yet. Oh, okay. So I'm curious what it's like. But, yeah, it's not that big a deal. Maybe we could ask for a tour. Oh, I so, probably hey, I've can. done them on all the other classes. Can we do, and then get, you can get a sneak peek and we could uh, get some of those free concierge snacks while we're in there. I think on the first <laughs> day when, when we arrive, you can do all kinds of tours, asking that's for right, tours. Yeah. That's right, that's right. Spa tour, okay. um, kids clubs tour, things like that. Uh, which is another tip too, that it's not on the Reddit thread, but for us, either on the first day and then there's designated times early morning each day, we can go into the kids' areas to look at how cool they are, even though we don't get to play in them during Very the day. Cute. They have all kinds of cool ones um, on this ship. Okay. Another fun tip here is, um, I guess it's not a tip, but it's saying someone made sure to highlight, which I'm very proud of. Mariah Carey is the godmother. We talked about this. <laughs> So she is the ship's godmother. Every ship that goes to sail, whether it's a small yacht or a cruise ship, normally has a little ceremony and they find somebody to bless the ship, break a champagne bottle on the front of the ship, and then they become the godmother. And for this ship, since it's fantasy, like the song, it's Mariah. So we got to look to see if there's any indication of that on the ship. I'm curious. Oh, yeah. That'd be fun to find out. We didn't look last time, huh? We didn't look. Nope. Oh, another... Oh, Disney Wish. Do you know who the godmother was? Remember? Is that Jennifer Hudson? Nope. <laughs> no? Which one is she? She's, I know the, she's, one of them. she's the dream, which is the sister ship dream. of the fantasy. Yeah. Okay. For the Wish, um, it was not a celebrity and it was not a single person. Oh, maybe I don't know. I don't remember this. It was the Make-A-Wish Kids. Oh, yeah. I don't think I knew that one. That's perfect for the wish. That's so cute. It's very cute. It. They might not be able to come see the ship, though, later when they grow up. <laughs> My I soul. had to. I had to. Someone had to have made a joke about them using Make-A-Wish <laughs> kids on the ship. I hope they got to ride the ship at least. Like I do not endorse this behavior, <laughs> FYI, for everyone out there listening. I'm just being realistic, you know. HR hat. Where's your HR hat? I threw it out the window at 5 p.m. today. Make a wish come true. Okay. Um, one last tip that I want to make sure we don't forget is so okay. back in the day on cruises, including Disney Cruise, you used to get a paper printout that had the daily itinerary of all the classes, activities, trivias, anything that changed that day that the captain wants us to know about. It'll tell you about your port of call, all the fun things. Now, obviously, they moved all of that to the phone. So it's all digital through the app, which is okay. It's helpful, but sometimes the app crashes or it doesn't connect to the Wi-Fi, kind of annoying. But apparently, you can request it and they will still give it to you every day. So we got to ask. I don't know the situation. I don't know if you request it and pick it up or if they slide it under your door the way they used to in the old days. Yeah. So I'd like to have it's a nice paper. Yeah. yeah. And then you could just like carry it around and we look at it while we're eating breakfast and stuff like that. Um, fold it into eights and fold put it into in your back eights, pocket. pocket. It'll be mm -hmm. great. Any last thoughts before we embark on this cruise? Um, no, I am just ready to go. I bought tank tops. I am not excited about the heat. I am very nervous about the heat. <laughs> so 
So I bought tank tops. I did not go as far as buying shorts, but I do have some leggings with some dresses. So I will there be flowy on this trip. And I will hopefully stay as comfortable as possible. I also need to buy some spray sunscreen because I'm so... I bought this spray sunscreen and never want to go back to lotion ever again. It's like the most annoying thing to use lotion now <laughs> after you went to the spray stuff. So I'm going to go back to sprays so much faster. Um, other than that, like I'm ready to go and I just am open to whatever we're going to do. I'm mo- mostly excited for the very adult things like those like... Um, Meet your match. Dating games yep. and stuff like that. Yeah, the match games at nighttime so and stuff fun. like those are hilarious. So we're going to have a blast. It's going to be a blast. And we'll report back. And if anybody follows us on Instagram, we'll probably be posting if we can get some Wi-Fi as we go. I had a request from one of our followers to do for me to post a review after every activity the way I do with movies, like one out of five, three out of five. Oh, and, cute. And I'll think about it. <laughs> I might forget <laughs> but if something it's usually if something's really good or really bad I feel the need to tell people right but if it's in between right. I just kind of like okay next what's next <laughs> yeah um, I have always great intentions if you guys saw the amount of content that's on my phone that I never completed <laughs> I'm like oh this would be great and I record all this stuff and then it just never makes it to Instagram it's or hard or and it gets it, it gets overwhelming to see it like to look through your camera roll and usually there's like five shots of one and you have to figure out which is the good one. Um, but all right. So we're going to be on the Disney fantasy. Are you ready to play a fantasy land themed game? Sure. <gasps> okay. So this is going to be the Disney Holics co-host version of the game password where I need you to guess the fantasy land related thing. Okay. And I can only tell you one word. And you have to see okay. how soon you can, how quick you can guess it. So you could always ask for another word, but you want to try to get a hole in one. That's the goal. Okay. All right. I think I get it. Okay. We'll see. <laughs> <clears throat> the password is dolls. It's a small world. Correct. That's correct. Ding, ding, ding. That's a funny one because it's so far back, but in Disneyland, that is Fantasyland still. Yeah. All the way back there. Yep. Um, All right. Next one. Some of these are too easy, so I'm actually going to make it harder for us since there's no cash prize. Anyways. (laughs) Um, Okay. Let's see. Um, This one's too easy. Okay. I'll just say backache. Matterhorn. <laughs> Matterhorn. It was too easy. I was going with like snowman, yeti, um, <laughs> Sweden, She's Swedish. Like, chiropractor. <laughs> I should have said Rico- Ricola. 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 Um, okay, next one is. Um, suspended. Skyway. Ooh, buckets. that's a good guess. Nope. Ooh, oh, Peter Pan's flight. Yes, there you go. <laughs> Everything I was going to say was like a character. Hook, shmi. Um, okay, next one. The password is hell. Oh. I'm just going to le- let this sit for a minute so everyone can scream it. Thank you. That is all. Mr. Toad's Wild Ride. Yes. Disneyland exclusive these days. <laughs> um, all right. Next one is so the password is Apple. 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 <laughs> I'm trying to do her voice. Apple? Um, Snow White's Enchanted Wish. Ooh, bonus points for getting the new name of the attraction. <laughs> <laughs> um. Ne- uh, the, the next password is Ooh, the next okay, the password is flamingo flamingo oh what is that ride called 
Alice in Wonderland. Is it just Alice in Wonderland? <laughs> yep, it's just called Alice in Wonderland. Yeah. <laughs> that one was hard, too, because every clue I was going to give that was one word was way too easy. And I thought, she, the, right. the, the Queen of Hearts is using a flamingo, right? I think it is. She turns it upside down. For croquet? For croquet. Yeah. yeah. Croquet? I was going to say croquet? miniature golf. Whoops. Um, <laughs> okay, the next password is... Royal. Royal? King Arthur's Carousel. <gasps> yes. Good one. Yeah. All right. Batting a thousand today. You're on a streak here. <laughs> well, you did get Skyway Buckets. Oh. Well, well, it's okay. <laughs> I mean. But that was also because I was. my defense, it's also spending. Yeah, I was trying to make it way too hard because it was so easy. <laughs> uh, okay, next password is... Favorite. Favorite. Ooh. Oh, this is going to be Mike's favorite. Storybook canal book. Yes, storybook land canal books. Thank you. Uh, I knew something was wrong there. I was like, that didn't flow off the tongue today. <laughs> off the tongue. <laughs> Such a good one. That's a very good one. Um, okay, I have a few more, and it's going to start. Now it's going to get a little bit hard. A little, just a tiny bit. We can just crank up the volume. Let's do it. Okay. Password is <laughs> crazy. Oh, shoot. Crazy. Um, Fantasyland. Crazy. <gasps> I don't know if I know this one. Um, so what did we have? Snow White we did, Peter Pan's, Mr. Toad's, you haven't done Pinocchio, Alice in Wonderland, Matterhorn, not the submarines, Very Just Small World, Autopia, no that's Tomorrowland. And this um, is any anything in Fantasyland for this password game. Uh, oh, thank you for that. It is going to be the Sword in the Stone. Ooh, no. No? Yeah, I'll Shit. give you a second you word. Space. Old. Crazy old Maurice. Yes. I almost said it as soon as you said crazy. I should have rolled with it. Crazy old Maurice. <laughs> Dang it. Yep. And do you know what is the answer itself? Um, It's either going to be Red Rose Tavern or Maurice's Treats. It'll be Maurice's Treats. Yep. It looks Perfect. just like his um, inventor vehicle, and you can get some not-so-great things and some great things there. Um, that new freaking garlic bread. Are they, is this the one people are stuffing food from another place into it? Yes. <laughs> it is hella good. Okay, I'll try but, that. But, like, don't take, don't eat it on a date. Like, oh, messy. don't eat it around people you care about. Like, it's like, it will ruin your breath for, like, three days, but it's well worth it. <laughs> what was, what's the food hack? So you go to Marisa's Treats to get the outer bread and then you go to i think people are going to bangle barbecue yes and putting like a skewer in it right that sounds yeah. right because then you get some meat chunks there and you can put it in yeah we used to do that with the tortilla factory over in dca and bangle barbecue <laughs> wrap make little wraps um let's see you already said red rose tavern okay just a pop quiz what did that used to be called that used to be called geppettos was it I think so. I think so, too. What's Village House? Is that Magic Kingdom? Oh, Pinocchio's Village House. Maybe it was. I feel like I always called it Geppettos, but on this list here, it says <laughs> yeah. Vill- Village House. Um, and last but not least, Feather. The password is Feather. Oh, Dumbo. Dumbo, Aww. the flying elephant. That was fun. Password. You should have gone harder on me, though, next time. It was easier than I thought. I was like, oh, I'm just going to get the list and just improv it. And then it was like, okay, this is way <laughs> too easy. Maybe next time we go full Disney everything. Full. Oh, yeah. Ooh, that'd be yeah. Hard. I've been doing some research on things in Disney World, and there's like so much stuff I don't know about. So we, it'd be a little harder if we went all Disney, Ooh. especially international parks. Don't even get me started. I don't know anything going on over there. Right? 
Super, super fun. So we're on episode 205, which means five episodes episodes ago, we celebrated our 200th uh, broadcast. And we also had a fun Patreon happy hour party to go along with that, which we recently did. And that was so much fun. We got to see a few of our friends and uh, we played some games and talked a little bit of Disney. Love that. We did. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Thank you guys so much for being patient with us and having to switch a date because I was very sick. You would not have wanted to hang out with me on the original date. Let's put it that way. <laughs> um, but it was a lot of fun. Um, I proceeded to completely plan this Jeopardy game and then not think about the the play through of how it would work with other people involved. <laughs> completely screwed it up, but we still had fun. We had fun. So thank you all for being like, what's the word I'm looking for? Flexible and just like rolling with the punches. We still had a blast. Um, That's the fun thing about played- trivia. Like even on the cruise ships, it's all about the journey, not the the. That is true. The destination. destination. Yeah, because it's that just so true. fun going through it. And whoever wins, I don't really, it's just not a big deal. It was fun too. And I think like, I almost want to get a little more personal next time with with a, a game like that and start pulling some of our information from our Patreon. Yes. Maybe we'll see how it goes. But then they'll know the answer. So I'll have to figure out how to, to do that correctly. Ooh. But this time I pulled a little like personal side of it like pictures of you and me doing stupid shit in disney parks <laughs> that was fun <laughs> you know, it made it a little more um personable instead of just like generic disney trivia so that was really fun and we ended up coming up with another idea that we should extend to all of our disney holic show listeners and viewers at some point which is sort of like this choose your adventure improv game and then we can record it and put it on the show so we did like a test pilot actually didn't work out as well as i wanted to for the episode but i think down the line we could do something and just invite whoever wants to come and who loves being part of storytelling disney style Yeah, and it's all about testing and playing, right? So the more we test it out and have fun with all of you guys, the more we can get to a point where we can have these really cool games. So, Bam. I'm all about it. I'm still waiting for Mike to do those games that he built like two years ago. Oh, my gosh. I built Those games are good and they're hard. Like uh, online puzzle type it was back when we were doing a lot of virtual escape rooms so i was inspired I was say, it's by like that. escape room yeah was, they were hard puzzles but they were good Ooh, like they were legit i still have some okay i need to bring that back up from the grave yeah. and we should allow yes, you do. some people to play with us <laughs> uh, but anyways we're gonna get our sunscreen on and get packing because <laughs> we have our cruise coming up so today's episode we talked all about what we're looking forward to on the Disney fantasy. And then we also did our fun fantasy land game of password. Yes. So thank you all for listening. And we hope you enjoyed episode 205 of the Disney Holics show. Follow us on social media at the Disney Holics. And if you'd like to get in touch with us, send us a DM on Instagram or contact us at the Disney Holics.com. Okay. Bye. Bye. Take it away, Mariah. We're going to count down the big moment. Ready? Join us, everybody. Ready? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I christen the Disney fantasy. May God bless this ship and all who sail on her. Man, I really want to go to Disneyland.